The Batman Who Laughs made his debut in Dark Knight's Metal. He is a Batman from the Dark Multiverse who is exposed to an extremely concentrated form of the Joker toxin and transformed into the Joker. Or at least his mind became as twisted as the Joker's, making him essentially a merging of Batman's skills and unparalleled intellect and Joker's unparalleled depravity. In other words, he's pretty much the most dangerous man in the universe. And in the sequel comic, Dark Knight's Death Metal, he became the most powerful being in the universe as well. And this video is going to go over how this Batman became a god. Now after the events of Dark Knight's Metal, the Batman Who Laughs had some fun in the DC Universe, causing a little mayhem here and there. But really, he was just biding his time till the moment was right to strike. He knew that Perpetua would be released after the events of Dark Knight's Metal, and that her release would give rise to possibilities of him ruling the multiverse. So he gave Lex Luthor information he needed in order to release Perpetua from her prison. Then, when the moment was right, he convinced Perpetua that Lex Luthor wasn't a very good partner, so Perpetua got rid of Luthor and took on the Batman Who Laughs as a new partner, or at least second in command. Which is of course the biggest mistake that Perpetua could ever make, as he was obviously going to double cross her. But regardless, when Perpetua takes over the universe, she has the Batman Who Laughs put in charge as her second in command. And he rules over the Earth with an army made up of other twisted versions of Batman. But as you can imagine, he is a terrible, dictatorial, monstrous ruler, so it's only a matter of time before his subjects rebel. And they do. And so the Batman Who Laughs is killed by Wonder Woman, using a special weapon made from the metal of her invisible jet. Meaning the weapon was invisible, which meant no one saw it, including the Batman Who Laughs, so she was able to get in close and kill him. But of course, the Batman Who Laughs had a fail-safe plan ready for this. Previously, he had come across the most powerful version of Batman in the Dark Multiverse. This was a Bruce Wayne who had come across the energy of Dr. Manhattan and had decided he wanted to investigate this power further. So he began recreating the experiment. Then the Batman Who Laughs intervened to make sure that Bruce Wayne was exposed to the radiation in the same way that Dr. Manhattan was, transforming him into Batman Hatton. And no, that's not a joke, that's actually the name they went with. And then the Batman Who Laughs waited till Batman Hatton was able to reconstitute his body. And then, at exactly the right moment, he stuck an energy knife into his head, essentially making him brain dead. He then stored his body away to use at a later date. And so, when the Batman Who Laughs died, his minions were under strict orders to put his brain into Batman Hatton's body, giving him all of Dr. Manhattan's powers and making him a god. But that was just the start. The Batman Who Laughs changes his name to the Darkest Knight and changes his body as well to represent this. And then he reaches out with his powers to pull energy from all the darkest worlds of the multiverse and increase his power. And he also steals power from the Flashes, who are guarding Wally West, who has energy from the original Dr. Manhattan. And he also steals power from the other heroes, who have managed to capture Crisis energy in order to fight Perpetua with. But he absorbs this power and merges it with his own, and becomes the most powerful being that has ever existed in the DC multiverse. Next to Perpetua, anyway. And the only real question left is, why didn't this Batman do this sooner? After all, he had Batman Hatton's body stashed away since before the first Dark Knight's Metal comic event. So why didn't he just make himself a god way back then? And I can only assume that his plan hinged on him becoming a god at just the right moment to take full advantage of the whole crisis with Perpetua. If he'd done it sooner, he wouldn't have been able to get the crisis energy and become as powerful as he did. So this does actually make sense, as he not only becomes a god, but he becomes the most powerful god in the multiverse. And if you are going to try and be a god, you might as well be the top dog. And that is how the Batman Who Last became the darkest knight and the most powerful being in the multiverse. Well, he'll obviously be defeated in the future of the comics, but he's still one of the most powerful beings that's ever been, and definitely the most powerful Batman to date. And although I do think this is a very cool idea, and I love that the Batman Who Laughs has done this, as it shows what Batman could actually become if he truly wanted to be a god. But I also think this might be a little bit much. I mean, there's no way he can keep these powers. After all, the character is so popular that he has to continue in the comics, which means they'll have to return him to normal, or else the character will be useless. After all, if he can kill Superman with a shrug, there's not really going to be any stakes in any stories he could be involved in. And of course, the best thing about the Batman who laughs is his lack of powers. Just like with Batman, the best thing about him is seeing what an ordinary man can achieve if he has the willpower to do it. And of course, insane wealth. But what do you think of this transformation? And what do you think the future of the Batman who laughs will be? Be sure to let us know in the comments. 
And I'd like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.